Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Oh, it's so wonderful, Nick. So, oh, so beautiful. I'm going to make you happy, Nick. Really happy. I'm going to be a good wife, darling. <laughs> Nick? What's the matter? Nick? What, what's happened? No. No. Nick? Nick? No! No! Up Theater invites you to escape with us now in the story of one woman's relentless pursuit of revenge in Cornell Woolrich's chilling story, The Bride Wore Black. Almost finished the manuscript? What? Oh, Mr. Holmes, I didn't hear you come in. I ask, are you almost done? Well, not quite, Mr. Holmes. I still have a few more pages. Well, let it go for now. I'd like to talk to you. Talk? Yes, a rather long talk. Why don't you take my armchair? Oh, no, I couldn't. Thank you. I insist. I want you to sit there. But I, I'm perfectly... I insist com- you sit there. But where will you sit? I'll take your chair. Now, if you don't mind. There, isn't that more comfortable? Why, yes, I suppose so. Uh, Now, just to make things a little cozier, suppose I put a little more wood on the fire. Oh, no. It's too warm in here already. Warm? I feel a chill. Just these two logs. There. Look at them blaze. Now, I'm just going to turn on this recording machine. Why? What for? I want this little talk of ours to be recorded. You see, there's something I want to clear up between us. Something you want to clear up? Yes, Mrs. Colleen. Mrs. Colleen? I know that's not the name you gave when you first came to work as my secretary. But it isn't my name. I happen to know better. Now, let's not get off on any tangents. We both know who you are. W- what on earth are you One getting thing I at? don't know yet, and the thing I'd like you to tell me now is just how and when you intended to murder me. Murder you? What? <laughs> oh, you're joking. Why should I want to kill you? I think that will come out in our talk, Mrs. Colleen. Well, I don't intend... No, 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 no. Sit right where you are. You're not going to get up out of that chair. Well, well, you can't just keep me here. Yes, I can. And I will. Now, you just listen to me without interruption. But you have no right Without interruptions. I don't flatter myself. I wouldn't be the first man you murdered. I have no intention of Uh, sitting here. Now, as a matter of fact, I was to be the last. But I want to go back to the first man, Ken Bliss. Bliss was at a party given at a penthouse of a friend of his named Corey when he saw you. Hey, hey, Corey, come here. Will you? Come, come here, come here. <laughs> what do you want, Ken? I want to ask you something. Who's that blonde dish over there in the corner, huh? Uh, which one? The one with the black knit dress. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wonder what she's doing here. Well, let's go over and find out. Well, come on, what are you waiting for? Yeah, all right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yes? I brought our host over to introduce us to another. Go on, Corey, start hosting. I'm not sure I remember the young lady's name. Of course you do. It's Nora. Nora? You sure? Of course I am. Oh, oh, of course. I mean, maybe I got you mixed up with someone else. Uh-huh. Perhaps you have. Perhaps. I don't know. Hey, 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 what is all this? (laughs) I'm Ken Bliss. How do you do? Come on, Nora. uh, Come on out to the terrace. Well, I... (laughs) Well, come on. I'll show you the city. All lit up. Well, all right. Beautiful terrace. Beautiful terrace. (laughs) I don't know how Corey can afford this place, but there have been rumors... Shut up, Ken. Okay, okay, Corey. Come on, Nora. Yes. I'll come along. No, 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 you got your guests. I'll come along. Whew, it's 
chilly out here. Uh, could you bring me my wrap? Had a boy, Corey. <laughs> Would you, Mr. Corey? Uh, but I. Okay. I'll get your coat. Which one is it? It's the blonde mink. Initials N R. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. It doesn't seem so chilly out here to me. It wasn't. It's just that I wanted to talk to you, Mr. Bliss. Alone. Oh? About something important. Important? What's important? You? Something about you? Yeah. What about me? About the time we met. Once before. We met? And I forgot. Well, we didn't exactly meet. You saw me. And I forgot you. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Impossible. You were in a car with three other men. That could be a hundred times. But this time the car's license plate number was UP3827. Remember? Um, no. I, <laughs> I got a rotten head for figures. Except for yours. Your figure. Well, this car was kept Forget in a, the car. It was kept in a garage uptown on Dykeman Street, and they left it there. They never called for it again. But I traced it. I found out who was in it. Look, who's interested in some car? I mean, <laughs> a beautiful girl, and all she gives me is some routine about a car. Enough. Come here. Well, stop. Now let's just stay interested in us. You and me. Hey, what's the matter? Uh, my scarf. You, you knocked it off my shoulders. You weren't wearing any scarf. It flew over the railing. Are you sure? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's caught on something. Right down there. Well, maybe I can reach it. Nah, nah. I'll do it. Here, look out. Let me, let me. Now, where is this thing, huh? It's right there. Don't you see? Watch out. Don't uh, lean over too far. Oh, oh boy. Makes me dizzy. I don't see no scarf. Right below you. A little more. A little more. Hey, wh what you doing? Getting even for <laughs> Nick Colleen. Huh? No! Wh ah! When Corey came back after searching for your non-existent coat, Mrs. Colleen, you were gone. You had killed your first man. No, I, I no, no, didn't. No, 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 don't get I... up. Sit there, right there. We still have a good deal to talk about. About Dave Henderson, for instance. He lived in a cheap hotel in Washington Heights, lived a cheap, drab life until one evening when he came back to the lobby. Hello, Mr. Henderson. You want your key? Yeah. Is there a uh, mail for me? Oh, yes, sir. Well, let's see what we got here. Uh, advertisement. Here. You want to buy a custom tailored suit? <laughs> no, I, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Neither can I right now. Hey, you sure this one is for me? Uh, well, your name's on the envelope, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but a theater ticket? Not even like the theater. Up theater. Box A, seat 409, and... Oh, it's for tonight. Why should anyone send this to me? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I hear Up does some great stuff. Were you ever connected with that theater? Nah. But I used to attend bar at this place where some of those theater types hang out. And maybe somebody remembered me. Well, I may as well go. <laughs> what can I lose? <laughs> Hello, Fort Washington Hotel. Uh, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, he, he's right here. It's for you. Hello? Davey, it's me, Maybell. Yeah, what do you want? Well, what are you snapping for? Uh, I'm not feeling so good. You sound all right. Well, I don't feel good. Uh, listen, I gotta hurry. Call me tomorrow, or I'll call you. Well, where are you going in such a hurry? I thought you said you're sick. I am. I'm going to bed. I'm sorry about our date. Aw, don't be foolish. That's all right. I'll tell you what. I'll bring over some nice warm chicken soup from the Capitol. No, no. I told you. Look, I gotta hang up. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, but, Davey! Chicken soup. Oh, excuse me. Mind if I take this seat? Why, no. Not at all. Plenty of room. You're just in time. They're dimming the lights. I didn't want to come too early. Tell me, did someone send you a ticket too? No. This is my box. But I must confess, I sent you your ticket. 
you sent my dick? Yes. I wanted to see you again. Again? <laughs> but I never saw oh, you. We can't talk here. I want to be alone with you. But the show's about to... Oh. <laughs> well, why don't we go over to my place? It's a hotel, and but it's respectable. Sort of. I wouldn't want to be seen going to your room. Oh, I understand. Well, we can go up the stairs. No one will notice us. It's only the third floor. What do you say? All right. That would be as good a place as any. Well, I can see by all the women's pictures on the walls that you're really a ladies' man, aren't you? <laughs> Those? Nah, they don't mean a thing. You know, I've always been looking for someone. The right one. Someone with class. Like you. I can imagine. No, this is no gag. I mean it. Just by being here, you make this room seem... Uh, I don't know how to say it. Something wonderful. You give it up kind of feeling. You understand? It's like I arrived somewhere. Somewhere I always wanted to go. Well, maybe we can arrange that. Let's have a drink. Oh, swell. I got some rye here in the closet. Hope you don't mind having it straight. I can have mine with water. If I'd have known, I'd have gotten something good. This will serve. Turn on the radio. I'll pour it out. Okay. Want anything special? No. Just some music. Ah, uh, now for a drink. Here's yours. Here's to a long life and a merry one. Yes, a long life. <sighs> Aren't you having any? It's not bad stuff. I was just thinking. Thinking? About our first meeting. Yeah. Yeah, I've been wondering about that. Where did I ever see you before? On the steps of Good Shepherd. On the steps of... <clears throat> oh. <coughs> hey, <laughs> that's funny. <coughs> What's wrong? <coughs> Nothing. Just a <clears throat> pain in my stomach. Uh, it, it, it'll go away, so... Oh. Now, what's this about you on the steps of a church? I was getting married. <coughs> <coughs> married? Don't you remember now? <coughs> no, I, uh... <coughs> oh. Oh, it's the darndest thing. All of a sudden... Oh, I, enough uh, of this radio. Oh, I guess burning here. Don't you remember? Oh, the church, uh, the wedding, and then uh, right uh, after... Uh, uh, something's wrong. I gotta call a doctor. No, <clears throat> you're not going to call a doctor. You're too late for a doctor. <clears throat> too late? What'd you do to me? I don't know you. Yes, you know <clears throat> me. I'm Mrs. Nick <clears throat> Killeen. <clears throat> Nick Killeen? I, uh, I don't understand. Oh. You don't remember <clears throat> Nick Killeen and the girl <clears throat> on the steps in a wedding dress? <clears throat> Dave? <clears throat> Dave! Open the door. My Please. wedding day, and you were there. Oh. You and three oh. others. No, no. You, uh, you got me. Dave. All mixed up. On the steps. I... Dave, it's Maybelle. Open the door. Just a minute. Yes, what do you want? Oh, well, I don't want to barge in. But I've got some chicken soup for Dave. Listen, get out of here quick. Make sure people see you leaving and take that jar of soup with you. Why? What's the matter? Do as I say. I don't want to see you getting into any trouble. I don't have anything against you. You must be nuts. All right. All right, go on in and have a good look. Up Theater Company's Escape will return with Act Two. And speaking of escape, picture this. You're waiting in line at your favorite local restaurant, picking up a to-go order, and the maskless couple in front of you are yelling at each other. Then another couple steps into line behind you, one foot behind you, masks around their chins. That's when you remember, you got your vaccination. Two doses down at the Javits Center. You did it for yourself and your loved ones. You know the vaccine can't solve all your problems, but it might be your best 
Es el tic. And now, back to Act Two of The Bride Wore Black. So that, Mrs. Colleen, is how you murdered Ken Bliss and Dave Henderson. Bliss you pushed from the terrace of a penthouse apartment. No, that's Then you not... poisoned Henderson in his hotel room. Now you can see why I wanted this recorded. Mr. Holmes, you... You, you know, this is a pack of lies. You know it's not true. On the contrary, every word of what I've said is gospel. No, no, don't get up. Now I'll go over what happened to Carl Passberg, a.k.a. The Dane. And you're going to sit and listen. We'll begin in the street, across from The Dane's apartment. A five-year-old boy riding a scooter is stopped by an attractive young woman. Hey, you got in my way. Oh, I'm sorry, but I found this ball. Is it your ball? Uh, no. Mine's a high bouncer. Well, do you want this one? I'll give it to you. Thanks. What's your name? Kirby. And what's your father's name? His name is Carl Passberg. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No, but I got a grandma, though. She lives in Garrison, but she comes to stay with us. Don't you ever go to Garrison to visit her? Oh, yeah, but the doctor says I make too much noise for grandma. She's sick. Oh, I'm sorry. My Aunt Deirdre takes care of her. So, Kirby, have you started school yet? Oh, sure. I go to kindergarten every day. What do you do there? We draw ducks and rabbits and... And Miss Ritter gave me a gold star for drawing a cow, and I brought it home. Really? Well, you be careful on that scooter, Kirby, and don't lose the ball. What is it, dear? A telegram from Aunt Deirdre. Mother's very sick and she had a stroke. A stroke? She said she needs me there right away. Well, then you better go. I'll drive you to the station. No, I'll take a cab. You stay here with Kirby. And Carl, don't let him get into any trouble while I'm gone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Passberg. Yes? This is Miss Ritter, Kirby's kindergarten teacher. Yes. I heard Mrs. Passberg had to go away, and I'm so worried about Kirby. You know, he's so sensitive. I'd like to come over this evening and help you take care of him. Well, certainly, Miss Ritter, and thank you for being so thoughtful. You're not Miss Ritter. You're not. Oh, what? You're that lady on the street. Oh, now, Kirby. Now, Kirby, that's no way to talk. It's nothing to be alarmed about, Mr. Passberg. It's just that he's very imaginative. What's the matter with you, Kirby? I thought you liked Miss Ritter. She isn't Miss Ritter. Let me handle him. I'm used to this. Now, Kirby, didn't I just give you a gold star the other day for drawing a cow? Hmm? And didn't I tell you I was going to see your parents someday and tell them how good you are in school? Did you? You know I did. Well, if you're Miss Ritter, how come you don't look like Miss Ritter? Oh, that's because I'm not wearing my glasses. You see, Mr. Passberg, there's a fine point of child psychology involved here. He's used to seeing me in my kindergarten and not here in his home, so... Hmm. Of course, that must be it. Now that he's getting used to me here, I think he's beginning to recognize me. Aren't you, Kirby? Um, yes, Miss Ritter. (laughs) There, that's better. Now, how would you like to show me your home? Here's the closet under the stairs. I used to hide in there when I played hide-and-seek. Now I can't. Why not? Daddy won't let me. He says there's no air in there. And look, look, I'll show you. I'll crawl in. There's nothing in here, but... Mr. Passberg, Mr. Passberg! Yes? Come here, please. What is it, Miss Ritter? What's happened? Uh, Kirby is locked in the closet, and I can't get the door open. All right, now don't be frightened. It can't be opened from the inside, but all we have to do is unlatch it like this, and the door comes open. All right, Kirby, come on out. It's so dark in there, I I couldn't see anything at all. 
Well, now, you get upstairs oh, and go to bed. No, Daddy. It's getting late. I don't want to. I'm having fun. Now, you heard me. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, that gave me a fright, his getting locked in there. I know. I was afraid the door had jammed. I don't let Kirby go in there. The door is solid oak, about two inches thick, and there's hardly any space at all. Yes, it is small. How long do you suppose a person would last if he got caught in there? Oh, I don't know. An hour or two at the most. The closet's airtight, and I don't... Oh, but... my goodness. Is something the matter? Oh, my my, my bracelet. Your bracelet? Look, oh, Kirby had it. He, oh, he must have left it in that closet. Oh, I'll get it. I'll just feel around in here. I'm sure I'll find it for you. Just hold the door open, will you? The dame. What? D did you say something? Carl Passberg, a.k.a. The Dane. This is for Nick Killeen. No, wait! Wait, what are you doing? Open the door! I, uh, who are you anyway? Why are you doing this? You won't ever be forgotten, Mrs. Killeen, by the widow of Carl the Dane. Or by little Kirby. But you must be out of your mind, Mr. Holmes, making these accusations against me. I assure I you I'm entirely sane. You see, Mrs. Colleen, I've been on to you right from the beginning. From the moment you wangled an introduction to me through my publisher. From the moment you came here to work as my secretary. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Colleen, I've been waiting for you. Waiting for me? Yes, ever since I put it together. The connection between Bliss, Henderson, Passberg, and now me... The auto ride following the drunken party. The wedding at a church. The murder. What? I... I What's the matter? I, it's getting too warm in here. It's this chair. I don't think you're too warm. I'm too close to the fire. Oh, no, no, no. Your hands are ice cold. You're trembling. Just let me go. No, let no. Me stay up. there. I want you to stay there in my chair. No, no. I, I can't. Why? Uh, please, please. Let me Why? go. Why? Why can't you stay in that chair? Because... Why can't you stay near the fireplace? Tell me. Why? Why? There's a shotgun, loaded, set behind this partition, pointed at this chair. The heat of the fire... Yes? You set it to kill me? Yes. Yes, I was going to kill you. All right, Mrs. Colleen. You can get up now. You don't have to hurry. I found the gun this morning and took out the charge. I think we have enough on the recorder. Mrs. Colleen, you were wrong on three counts. About the gun about the way your husband was killed, and one more thing about me. About you? Yes. What about you? I'm not George Holmes. Not... I've just been substituting for him. Substituting? Who are you? I'm Lieutenant Martin Collins, New York City Police, Mrs. Colleen, and I put you under arrest for the murders of Ken Bliss, Dave Henderson, and Carl the Dane Passberg, and the attempted murder of one George Holmes, though I don't think we'll even bother about that. Yes? Mrs. Colleen out here for you, Lieutenant. Okay, bring her in. All right, Bosley, wait outside. Yes, sir. Sit down, won't you, Mrs. Colleen? I hope you weren't too uncomfortable last night. It's bad enough without your sarcasm. Oh, well, I'm quite sincere. You see, I realized your motive in this whole series of murders. Revenge. Well, I suppose that's a motive anyone can understand, but not condone. And in this case, Mrs. Colleen, you killed three innocent men. How can you say that? They murdered Nick, killed him in cold blood right on the steps of the church. They didn't kill him. Oh, they did. No. I was... But I... Let's reconstruct what happened that day. The wedding was over. You came out of the church. You and Nick, your bridesmaid, the others. Suddenly a car came from around the corner. At high speed, came toward the church. There was a series of sounds, like backfires. And then... Ah! What's happened? No! Nick! No, Nick! Oh, Nick! P please get up. You better come with me, Julia. Please, Julia, you're getting blood on your dress. Let me handle this. Come on, no, Julia. No, I, I don't need any help. Andrea, did you see that car? Yes, dear. Come on, Julia. No! Andrea, did you get a good look? Yes, I did. How many men were in that car? There were four of them, but I... Did, I... did you see the license number? Yes. Come with me, please, Andrea. 
I'm going back inside the church. To pray. No. To make a vow. Another vow. To Nick. That's what happened on the steps of the church, isn't it, Mrs. Colleen? Yes. You made one mistake. A tragic mistake. Those men in the car, they had nothing to do with your husband's death. They did. They killed him. No. On the day that Bliss and Henderson, the Dane and Holmes, tore past the church steps in their car, another man crouched in the window of a rooming house opposite, a gun in his hand, waiting for Nick Colleen. Who? He raised his gun as you came out on the steps... As the car streaked by, its exhaust backfiring, he shot. Who? Who was it? Who? Just a moment. Bosley, bring him in. Yes, Lieutenant. He was a former partner of Nick's, a man who worked the rackets with him, a man who couldn't let Nick go straight. Oh, stop torturing me. Who was it? Good morning. Oh, no. It can't be. How do you do, Mrs. Killeen? Quarry. Yeah. When you came to my party, I thought I recognized you from the picture that Nick showed me once. And I sent you back inside to get my mink wrap so I could kill Bliss. (laughs) Yeah. Wasn't it too bad you didn't know who I was? Too bad Nick wouldn't introduce you to his partner. I guess he thought I wasn't good enough to meet the bride. Well, he was right. You weren't good enough. (laughs) Maybe. But now look at the mess you're in. You're done. I'm done. But it's not just me, Corey. It's both of us. And wouldn't it be something, Lieutenant? What's that? Wouldn't it be something if he and I were both hung on the same day? Tonight, Up Theater has presented the classic escape episode, The Bride Wore Black, by Cornell Woolrich, adapted for radio by Paul Monash, directed by Doug Bost, with sound design by David Margolin Lawson, and transcribed by James Bosley. Featured in the cast were Laura Foyce as Julia, Jeff Ward as Holmes and Collins, Rick Walter as Bliss, Doug Bost as Corey and the Clerk, Peter Fleehan as Dave, Nikari Rodriguez as Mabel, Andrea, and Mrs. Passberg, Jonah Fields as Kirby, Joe Burby as Carl, and I'm your announcer, Martin Collins. Ups Radio Plays are supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council and by listeners like you. Thank you. If your friends missed tonight's episode, tell them they can listen anytime on our YouTube channel. For everyone here at Up Theater, good night. <laughs>